If you've ever walked through the remnants of an old European village, the kind that stood through Viking raids, famines, and centuries of storms, you may have noticed something peculiar. Many of the beams in those ancient buildings, especially the ones touching the ground, are still intact. They outlived the people who built them, the wars that scarred the region, and in many cases even the stone foundations beneath them. It raises a question that has puzzled modern builders for decades. How did medieval craftsmen, without our chemicals, waterproofing agents, or modern pressure treatment, create wooden structures that resisted rot for generations? The closer you look, the clearer the truth becomes. They weren't lucky. They used a deliberate method, rooted in observation, experimentation, and survival logic. And the trick they used still works today. Now let's set the hook properly before we jump into the meat of this guide. Throughout Middle Age Europe, timber was life. Whether it was a cottage in the Black Forest, a granary in the Scottish Highlands, or a fortress in Eastern Europe, wood was the most essential building material. But wood is also the most vulnerable, especially in damp climates. Yet certain buildings survived with beams that remained solid for hundreds of years. This wasn't folklore. Archaeologists found oak sill beams that endured nine centuries, pine posts in alpine structures still strong enough to bear weight after half a millennium, and church timbers so well preserved they look younger than Victorian houses. And all of it was achieved using a simple, repeatable method. Once you understand how they did it, you can apply the same practice to your own homestead, off-grid cabin, or survival structure. Now let's step into the real knowledge. The medieval anti-rot trick began with choosing the right wood the right way. In medieval building traditions, timber selection wasn't guesswork. Craftsmen understood that wood cut at the wrong time of year would decay faster, even if the species was resilient. The secret lay in winter harvesting. Trees felled in the dormant season contained minimal sap, and sap is what fungi, insects and bacteria depend on to colonise the wood. Medieval builders typically cut their beams during the coldest period, when sap flow was at its lowest. If you want to apply this today, the principle is identical. Harvest or purchase lumber sourced from winter-cut trees. If you're cutting the wood yourself, aim for late winter, just before temperatures begin rising. The timber you get from that cycle will naturally resist rot longer because the sugars and moisture that attract decomposers simply aren't present at the same levels. The second part of the trick involved removing the wood's vulnerability through a slow, controlled seasoning method. We often assume medieval people air-dried wood because they lacked other options. But air drying wasn't a weakness, it was the magic. Rapid drying splits the wood, invites moisture cycling, and weakens the structure over time. Medieval woodworkers stored their beams under covered, ventilated shelters, never in direct sunlight and never in sealed barns. The airflow mattered more than the dryness. This slow seasoning created timber with stable internal moisture content, which meant the beams did not expand and contract dramatically with the seasons. Consistent moisture equals consistent integrity, and fungi struggle to colonize wood that doesn't trap sporadic dampness. If you're building a shed, cabin, or outdoor frame today, season your lumber slowly. Stack it with spaces between each board to let air circulate, cover only the top to shield from rain, and avoid sealing it too early. You're essentially replicating the medieval drying barns that preserved wood for centuries.
The third key technique was charring the wood surface to create a rot-proof, insect-resistant shell. While Japan became famous for the method known as Shosugi-ban, Europeans practiced a similar technique long before the name existed. Builders lightly burnt the ends of posts and beams destined to contact the soil. This char acted as a carbon shield, repelling insects, resisting moisture penetration, and preventing microbial activity. Archaeological digs in Scandinavia and the British Isles reveal charred post ends in structures up to a thousand years old. To apply this today, you don't need elaborate tools, just a controlled fire source. Hold the end of your beam over the flame until the outer layer blackens, but stop before the structure weakens. Brush off the loose soot and apply natural oil if you want additional protection. This simple act alone can double or triple the lifespan of a ground contact beam. The fourth part of the medieval method was creating barriers that prevented water from ever staying in contact with wood long enough to cause decay. Medieval builders didn't bury wood directly in soil unless absolutely necessary. When they had to, they used drainage layers made from gravel, river stones, or compacted sand to keep water moving. In many structures, sill beams rested on stone foundations rather than touching the earth. This one design choice is the reason so many European timber structures survived the centuries. You can mirror this strategy easily. If you're building a chicken coop, firewood shed, smokehouse or workshop, set the posts on stone or concrete blocks instead of burying them. If you must bury a post, use a gravel base at least a foot deep so water drains away rather than pooling under the wood. The method is deceptively simple, but it was one of the strongest lines of defence medieval builders used. The final trick was constant airflow around the wood, which acted as a natural preservation system. Stagnant air is the enemy of longevity. Medieval designs, from barns to longhouses, all shared one principle. The structure never trapped moisture. Raised floors, vented walls and open eave gaps created circulation that kept beams dry. Today's off-grid structures benefit from the same principle. Don't seal your shed or coop like a modern house. Leave breathing space. Build vents on opposing walls. Use designs that encourage cross-flow. Your wood will last longer than any commercial sealant can promise. What we call medieval wood magic was never magic at all. It was physics, biology and observation working together, and it's timeless. Whether you're building a homestead structure, reinforcing an off-grid cabin, or restoring old timber, these practices still outperform many modern shortcuts because they work with nature instead of against it. If you found this guide valuable and you want more history-driven survival knowledge, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with someone who appreciates the old ways. This channel thrives because of viewers like you who keep real craftsmanship and real history alive.